referred to a lot of this stuff already today, so I'm not going to belabor the points. So why build custom modules? Well, there's several ways that you can add functionality to .NET Maybe. And I would say that the that these are in order of priority. So most important ones be possible for you as a user. So if you want to add functionality to .NET New, the first thing I would look at doing is installing custom modules. Okay? Then you can build custom modules for yourself. So you buy or find, there's lots of free ones out there. And the ones that are for, for sale are pretty inexpensive as a rule. I mean, there's a lot of $20 modules that are very functional. There's also some hundreds of dollars of modules in a store, for instance, things like that. But how long would it take you to build your own? Okay? But you can build your own, and that's what we're here to, to look at today. You can also change providers. You can switch the functionality, like if you want to use a different sort of authentication mechanism, or if you want to use a different database than SQL Server, you switch the database provider. Okay. And, and you can modify the DNN core. You can get the source code for the DNN. I don't recommend doing that. And I mean, it's just like any other application. Once you change that core portal functionality, you're not on the hook to you know, do your own maintenance. To do your own maintenance. So if they if they release a security update, and you've got to do it in your own version of .NET New, you know, you have to go and pick out of, of the source code of what they did to fix the security bug, and you've got to put it in your own version. It's a pain in the ass. All right, don't don't do that unless unless you absolutely have to. All right, really, really, you don't have to change the core of DNN. You want to build a custom module, and then you petition the core team to change the core. Okay, so you can change the core, but just do it temporarily. All right. So custom modules are pluggable extensions to, to DNN functionality. That's the basic idea here. And what what I often recommend is when you're, especially when you're getting started, take a look at the at the existing core, all those core modules that are in there. You can get the full source code for them. Install them and step through them in debug mode. Look at how they operate. Use those as a guide for how you build your own modules. That's by far the easiest way to get started. I will show you how to get going with the starter kit. And let me tell you, it ain't pretty. Okay, you got to do a lot of work. <laughs> it's a it's a pain in the butt. Starting. All right. So what you're typically going to do is you're going to start. You're going to use the starter kit to build your own initial template for a, for a module. So if you're in the business of building modules, then you're going to build your own initial sort of empty template, and you're going to reuse that every time you build a module. You don't start from scratch every time. That'd be a waste of time. But they don't give you that template to begin with. They give you some tools in a box, some assembly required, batteries not included. All right, you've got to do all that stuff yourself. <laughs> and that's what, that's what we're going to look at. So the idea now in building custom modules is, is you're going to reuse core code without changing it. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of plumbing provided by the DNM core. There's a bunch of user controls. There's a bunch of things that you definitely want to reuse. You don't want to build, like, like if you, you're trying to build a link, control interface. You don't want to build your own link control. You don't want to build your own login control. Just reuse the ones inside the .NET Nuke. So I like to think of DNN as an application development platform, because that's really what it is. I mean, at its, at its heart, it is a portal application, but by God, it's a great application development platform. You can build some pretty amazing stuff. It supports, fully supports AJAX. You can use jQuery now in DNN 5, if any of you are, are, are interested in that stuff. And, I mean, you can you got the world going for you here now. MVC isn't supported yet, the new ASP.NET and MVC, but I think the core team is looking at that pretty carefully and trying to figure out what they're going to do, if anything, with it. So lots of pluggable infrastructure, lots. I mean, <laughs> you, you, what you definitely want to do is you want to install a source code version of DNN and explore it. Run it in design mode. You know, just walk through it and look at how they build stuff. Even if you don't necessarily reuse their functionality directly, you can take their code plop it into your own modules and use it as a starting point. It's all it's all available. It's all free. It's the beauty of open source. Sorry. It's BB. The core code is BB. Um, that's, that, actually, that's a good point, and I think I address it on my next, I don't, but um, uh, although the .NET new core is built in BB, you can build custom modules in c -Sharp if you're building your own assembly, so it doesn't matter. It does not matter what language you build modules in. I'm going to show you VB today because that's what I put my modules in. But, uh, but it, this works just fine in C Sharp as well. All right. So let me skip the DNN installation. And I do want to just jump out, though, and show you quickly. Um, there we go. 
the uh, just an installation of the custom. Did, did you do this? And Cus cu uh, the installation, yeah. Oh, so custom module. So let me. Oh, not custom module. Let me just go to. Uh, well, not not a custom module, but did you show a module installation? I showed a skin installation. We didn't get the module okay. installation. So let me just go to. But I didn't use DNN five either, so it'd probably be worth it. Um, so what do I call this? Uh, I can't type today. Uh, there we go. All right. So, like Will, I'm I'm working on Vista here, and I'm actually got a sad story to tell. I've been having problems. Anybody who's seen one of my presentations in the last couple of years <laughs> knows that I've been having video problems with my machine, and I'm now using my machine because I found somebody who could help me who had the same problem and solved it. There's a little mouse. Bluetooth driver of some sort. And what would happen is as soon as I hooked to a video system, it would go into full zoom mode. So PowerPoint slides would zoom out to the top three pixels and you know, what a pain. So I so basically I've been carrying a virtual PC driver around with me and using server two thousand three for my demos. I'd much rather do it in Vista because um, personally who, who uses Vista yet? All right. More than half the <laughs> more than half the group. This is great. Uh, developers like me, like this, the Vista is a great development platform. So I'm, I'm actually using a URL I've created. I've modified my host file and, and actually created a site. I don't have to use virtual directories, you know, necessarily. I, you can do that in Server 2003 as well. So I'm going to log in here. This is just a. So this is um, this is DNN5 release candidate two, and this is my development portal that I've been using for my custom code development. I always type post. Is that available to the public? Yes. You have to you have to have a login to the .nuke.com site. You have to register, but you, it is available. Okay. So good. The one that I want to install is not here. So um, it's an FAQs module. All right. So FAQs is not in the list. And what I'm going to do is go to the host menu. All right. So module installation is always done through the host site. So you can't you cannot put functionality into .nuke unless you're the host user. And I'm going to go to module definitions. We could also use the new extensions page. Um, I personally really like the module definitions better. All right. So this is the list of modules that are currently installed. You can see that uh, now we can manage, uh, well, through this interface we can only manage modules, but, uh, but in the extensions page you can also manage skins and um, providers. providers and um, <coughs> containers and all kinds of things. Uh, so down here at the bottom we have an install module link. And I'm just going to go to uh, install new package, uh, browse to my drive, and probably I'll have to you know, do the whole. Actually, I can go here. Sorry, I got so much junk on my machines. Okay, so went to the wrong place though. Um, that's where I put my source code from. <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, so so let me back up. Hold on. Uh, it's under. So DNN dev resources. Somewhere I've got this module. Um, yeah. Ah, I know where I can find it. No, that's that's not the right one. That's that's for a different demo. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you know the name? Just do a search. It, um, it's on an external drive. That's the problem. It's down here. Okay, there we go. Just looking for the silly FAQs module. All right, this is one of the standard core modules, and all I did was I I, I browsed to the install.zip file that I downloaded from the DNN site. And this is the installer. This is not the source code for it. Okay, and I click next, and I am working in DNN five here, so we're going to see a little bit of new stuff on on the install wizard. So here's the package information. They call it a package now instead of a, of a well, they used to just call it a manifest, I guess. Um, but you can add some additional information now. For example, release notes go here. Um, there is a license 